What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out Vince Steele, the big problem for WWE, John Cena's recent uh photos, and uh what the Undertaker really told Bray Wyatt on Raw uh 30th uh, anniversary show. Uh, I've been seeing the John Cena photos, I'm not sure what's going on i'm not sure if it's for uh um his hbo series he got as a peacemaker maybe or maybe it's for another movie i don't know but it's fucking hilarious so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel let's get right into this one man what's going on guys it is wrestlemania here back with some guys. more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including a vince mcmahon is still a problem in wwe oh How boy much will vince make from a wwe sale the undertaker reveals what he told bray wyatt there's no plans for a top star jbl finished with wwe john cena spotted in new role and much more be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily show, wrestling videos man. and follow us on Subscribe Facebook to the for exclusive WrestleMania. lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Now our first story looks at Vince McMahon is still a problem in WWE. At top of today's news is another story concerning a potential WWE sale, in this case whether Mr. McMahon is helping to facilitate the sale or he's hurting the process. Vinnie Mac returned to the WWE recently claiming he was there to oversee any sale of the company or new negotiation of a new TV rights deal, however is the kingpin making things easier or harder? Or Meltzer is reporting, because of the payoffs to a number of women regarding affairs and allegations that some of those situations were not consensual, McMahon's return to the company and involvement in the sale talks has been very controversial. Hmm. The economics of WWE are very strong and look only stronger going forward unless there's a collapse or decline of media rights fees. Meltzer went on to discuss the report which suggests, at this stage of the game, the belief is that McMahon's presence is a hindrance and not a help in these negotiations. Although as the largest stakeholder, he is also the key beneficiary financially if and when the sale goes down and for that reason forced his way into that process. You may recall a recent story that Vince McMahon made it clear that putting him in charge of creative is not a condition of any sale. There have been rumors that McMahon was trying to use a sale to regain power in creative. Now we know better than to try and hypothesize on what's going on through Mr. McMahon's mind, mm -hmm. however it's incredible to see him return to the company only for himself and the company to face lawsuits and potential lawsuits over the way he returned to the company. Yeah, it's it's been, I believe there's some more lawsuits heading his way, like it's, it's crazy, he tried to pull a power move. But ultimately, it's still some issues that he's having, even with the whole process of even trying to sell the company. So it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out, but it's not as cut and dry as we thought it was when he initially returned. Regardless of whether these lawsuits are filed to capitalize on the upcoming <clears throat> sale with the idea that WWE will settle just to move on with a potential sale, it's mind-boggling that WWE has tolerated McMahon putting a target on his back and the company's. Yeah. Mr. McMahon is the majority shareholder in terms of voting rights, but the board does have options for dealing with him if they feel he's creating too many problems. Mm, interesting. Up, how much will Vince make from the sale? A lot All of money. <laughs> to be seen if the WWE is sold, it looks like it could lead to a big payday for WWE executives and major shareholders. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a recent report from Dave Meltzer concerning how much several players look to bring in. If the company was sold for $8 billion, this is roughly what the key people in the company would make from the sale. Hey yo. <laughs> hey yo. I just want I just want y'all to look at Triple H's numbers. He's making an extra eight million dollars, right? Linda McMahon making an extra fifty million dollars. That's his wife. Kevin Dunn, 24. Nick Khan, 13 million. Don't know who Frank Riddit is still. Extra 10 million in his bank. Stephanie is making an extra $170 million. And then, of course, Vince, a billionaire. $2.5 billion plus dollars, bro. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's just. That's ridiculous. That is. I don't even. 
words can't even just quantify how big that is. Potentially. Jesus. Sale. Vince McMahon, two and a half billion. Stephanie McMahon, 170 million. Linda McMahon, 50 million. Kevin Dunn, 24 million. <laughs> Nick Khan, 13 million. Frank Riddick, almost 11 million. Paul Levesque, 8 million. What do you think of these potential paydays? Let us know in the comments I, down below. I, I, I can see why he would, want, he, he would want to come back and sell it. I can see why. That's, I mean, he's already a, a millionaire. I'm not sure if he's considered a billionaire. I believe he's in the upper millions for sure. He sells the company. He instantly becomes a billionaire. He has the most uh, stake in the company stock-wise. Like, yeah, he becomes a billionaire. Easy. Just, that's that's just insane. <laughs> Next up, The Undertaker reveals what he told Bray oh Wyatt on Raw. Just what insane. did The Undertaker whisper to Bray Wyatt Woo! when the two interacted during the Raw 30th anniversary show? Fans have been asking this for weeks as many believe that the interaction was an informal passing of the torch. Now the Undertaker is letting the world know what he told Bray. What During an say, appearance man? on Sportsnet, Taker revealed, I just let him know too that my phone's always on and if he needs to talk to me about things or run things by me, that's cool. I'd be more than glad to share my experiences with him and hopefully shine some light on questions that he has moving forward. It was a cool moment and I did exactly what I thought it would do. During the interview, the Phenom praised the current Bloodline storyline, mm -hmm. noting Sami Zayn is doing remarkably well in his role, and Taker also discussed the comparisons between Bray Wyatt's character and his. There's obviously a huge amount of comparisons between his character and mine. Of course. I think, you know, he's his own guy. He's his own character. I don't think it's fair to him to compare what he does to what I did. In the big scheme of things, obviously, it's in the same supernatural, but I don't know what genre. <laughs> it's 2023 and he's doing his own thing. But I can appreciate and I can see what he's trying to do. Now, the Undertaker is repeatedly praised by its ability, and it's clear he's a big fan of his work. This dates at least far as back to WrestleMania 31, and the Undertaker reportedly told Vince McMahon to take care of White as he saw a lot in him. Next up, no plans for. And he didn't, in a sense. <clears throat> the thing about Wyatt, and I think he's he's lost a lot of steam from when he originally uh, came back from uh, last year. The thing is. You can do the spooky, supernatural stuff sparingly, in a sense. Because we live in a different day and age where people, you know, it's all about, you know, social media. And we can kind of poke through those supernatural elements. Like, back then, it worked, in a sense, because, you know, it was just a different time period. There was no social media. So, you could pull off some supernatural acts. And a lot of times, people would buy into only... What the hell just happened? You know, but now I think you can be a creepy, scary character without all the extra supernatural stuff. I think you can still pull it off. You can have that person that gets into that mode where they're different. They're not the same person. Like you can have the normal Bray doing his promos and all this other stuff. And then you can bring out that person that's like, they, when they when they get ready to wrestle, they tap into something. They 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 switch in a sense. You can have your creepy elements here and there, but I think when it comes to conveying that believability, it has to it has to you have to find that fine line. You don't want to overdo it, and you don't want to underplay it. You got to find that fine line where it makes sense. People can buy into it, and it's entertaining. What happened with him? In that Mountain Dew pitch black match, it was when you really look at it in hindsight, it wasn't going to really work because it was a sponsored match. And I, I think once you add that sponsor element to it, it doesn't have the same intensity or the, the heart that you would uh, want a uh, a debut match of Bray Wyatt in his newish kind of gimmick. So I'm not sure where they go with him, um, but. Hopefully he can get into another feud and it works and maybe we see more of him wrestle. I'm not sure. He has some great ideas, but I think some of the ideas can be taken a little bit too far and it just doesn't really work like like maybe how they, you know, drew it up in a, in a, like a meeting or whatever. But I do think there's still some upside to Bray. I haven't given up on him and I want to see what they do with him moving forward. WWE's top star. 
But what does WWE have planned for Matt Riddle at this year's Mania? The WWE is preparing for its biggest show of the year, which means it has plenty of matches to plan out, but according to Ringside News, they don't include Riddle. Fans who are hoping to see Matt Riddle on the road to WrestleMania might want to stop reading here as WWE has zero creative plans for the original bro at this time. Yeah. WWE have reportedly suspended Riddle after an alleged second violation of his wellness policy. It's unclear whether the WWE wants to give the original bro time to show he can work without any future problem, but there's some other factor keeping him out of Mania. Would you guys like to see Riddle wrestle at the Showcase of the Immortals? Let us know in the comments down below. I mean, the, the thing is, I mean, there's not really much for him story-wise. Uh, I do think he needs to focus on getting getting himself together before he comes back. The only story I think that really will have people interested is Randy Orton and, and uh, as we're about to talk about, Randy Orton, Matt Riddle. I think that's the best story he could possibly have. Them going at it. But we, we don't know Randy's update, so we're about to check that out actually right now. Next up, a Randy Orton update. Now speaking of returns, what about Riddle's RK Bro tag team partner, Randy Orton? The Viper has been recovering from back surgery, but a recent picture of him shows Orton in terrific shape. Should fans take this as a sign that he's on his way back? Or well, Meltzer had to say this in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. We've heard no wrestling update on him recently, but his back injuries were very serious, and a few months ago there was concern about whether he'd be able to return or at best, it would be a long time, which it has already been. Mm -hmm. While Randy Orton is an ancient of days, he's 42 years old and he's had major surgery, therefore it could take him some time to heal and rehabilitate. Like any return, there's also the matter of the WWE not wanting to bring him back for just any storyline when he's Facts. cleared to wrestle. In addition, the WWE may want to keep his return a surprise. That too. Unfortunately, this is another situation where the best the fans can do is wait and see when the Legend Killer returns. Yeah, Next I'm hoping he, uh, you know comes back relatively soon once again you know it, uh, it, only if he's you know physically able to when anytime you're doing with anything with the neck back region you got to be careful with that me being a testament of the recent car accident i had uh this week you know i you know i'm definitely making sure i take care of myself and going to therapy and stuff like that so i i can understand when it's dealing with having a back surgery yeah, you may want to take your time, may want to make sure everything's good because it's not just him, you know, walking around and, you know, living his normal day-to-day -day life. Going back to wrestling, that's a, a heavy toll on your body in general. Hell, we saw what happened with Edge. He had to retire for damn near almost 10 years. He had to let it go because the doctor said if you keep on, you may not walk again. And he was able to come back, and that took a lot of time, so... Hopefully, it's not the same situation with Randy, but we will see keeping him in our prayers, and, you know, hopefully he has a speedy recovery. Next up, WWE will air SmackDown from the UK live. What's good news for UK fans is that WWE has decided to broadcast an episode of SmackDown as well as its upcoming Money in the Bank Ooh, PLE. Oh, that's going to be fun, WWE bro. WWE released this press release. That's going to be fun. There's no word on whether the WWE intends to air Raw in the UK, but we will continue monitoring the story. Next up, that's going to be fun. Smackdown in the UK, the go home show potentially for uh, Money in the Bank. Sign me up. You guys in the UK, you guys are a fucking amazing. Shout out to all the UK subscribers. You guys show love every single time we go overseas. You guys show love in the crowd, and I love to see it. So I cannot wait to that show, and I can't wait to Money in the Bank in the UK. Oh my. Woohoo! That's gonna be a fun event. Bischoff believes the Bloodline story is better than the NWO. Ooh. The Bloodline storyline is white hot, but how does it compare Facts. to WCW's New World Order saga? While well, Eric Bischoff weighed in during an episode of his 83 Weeks podcast, saying, The truth is, the Bloodline story, in terms of a storyline and the ingredients and the elements and the discipline and the structure and the nature of it, it is a far better story than an NWO. Will it have the same impact on the industry as the NWO did? Probably not, mm. but that has a lot to do with timing. Facts. He discussed why things worked so well for the rogue faction that terrorized WCW. There were so many things that made the NWO work, including Hulk Hogan turning heel, by the yep. way. There were so many things that were just a moment in time that helped propel that storyline at that time that you can't replicate that today. Eric Bischoff's heavy involvement in creating the NWO gave him a unique perspective on things, so it's interesting to see him here and praise the Bloodline storyline over the New World Order. I mean, this storyline is pretty fantastic, and it, it has some similarities. You have the guy 
that has been the ultimate babyface for so long to the point where fans were just sick and tired of it. He comes back, and it's it's not in the same sense of 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 uh, Roman joining a group. He comes back and he ultimately starts a a family group by force, by manipulation. So I can see a little bit of comparisons. And then of course, the NWO, just in that time period, it'll never be another faction that was just that over in that time period to the point where it was just mainstream. It was mainstream. It, that, it, that was a rare time period. So I don't think it'll ever be, it'll have the impact like that. But the Bloodline storyline, in my opinion, will probably go down as one of the best storylines that WWE has ever produced. And it'll go down as a storyline that people can actually go back and relive. This is one of those storylines. For example, I know there's a lot of comparisons of the Authority storyline with Daniel Bryan. That wasn't planned. A lot of that just organically happened and is still one of the best moments, best storylines as well, because you have the ultimate underdog trying to stop the Authority. It worked, so I think this storyline with the twist and the turns and the new people being added to it, fantastic. It will go down as one of the best storylines in WWE history. It's up there with the Stone Colds and the uh, and the Vince McMahon saga. It's up there, bro. It's it's just great. You know, some people can say I'm I'm giving it a little bit too much uh too much praise, but no. It's the most compelling stuff on every single show. If it's on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, it's the most compelling stuff. It's kind of hard to argue that. Next up, JBL done with WWE for now. That's bad news for fans who were enjoying the storyline featuring JBL's attempt to transform Baron Corbin Who's into a day wrestling <laughs> god. JBL I saw this ways with on Corbin uh, on the Twitter. February Raw after Corbin lost to Dexter Loomis, admonishing Corbin for tarnishing his name and telling him you can't polish a turd. Yeah. Now Meltzer is reporting that JBL's role is over and that JBL is done as a character. There's no idea what's next for Corbin, but he's been repackaged so many times that one can only imagine what's next for the former lone wolf, King Corbin and Happy Corbin. The only thing he hasn't tried is a supernatural gimmick. Perhaps oh, Corbin no. could join the Wyatt Six or break out as Papa Corbin, bringing Papa Shango's gimmick back into the 21st century. Next. Nah, man. I, a lot of people are saying go back to the lone wolf. Being that, I mean, he's tried everything. Go back to being that lone wolf. That's what kind of worked for him. The only thing is, he still, he doesn't have the charisma that you would want. Like, he's, he's pretty good in the ring. He's pretty good in the ring. Will not deny that. Has one of the coolest signature and finisher moves in all of wrestling. I think it's that charisma, that passion. is it, Not the passion. I'm sure he loves the business. But the charisma is not there to match a gimmick. Any heel gimmick he's done so far. It just it hasn't worked. Like When people see Baron Corbin, he, even though JBL, he was dropping some truth bombs. When people see Baron Corbin, a lot of times they just turn the channel, bro. And it sucks because he's not bad. He can actually have some great matches. It's just people just don't care about his character. They haven't in a very long time. So I don't know what they do. Um, what the hell is that on my beard, man? Goddamn. I've been sitting here with shit in my beard. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do um, with him. But maybe he goes back to the Lone Wolf character. We will see. Stop Kurt Angle talks comeback match. Is oh, Kurt Angle no. planning a comeback match? No, Kurt. The wrestling's <laughs> Olympic hero recently spoke with Sports Illustrated about no, his Kurt. role as celebrity judge for the PFL Challenger Series third week. During the interview, they asked if Angle plans on coming out of retirement. No. I don't plan on doing another retirement match. Once you do, you're never retired. You just keep on going back and doing it over again. Rick it's refreshing to hear a Flair. wrestler dismiss any talks of a comeback in light Rick of how other wrestlers swear they are finished in the ring, only to return to action a couple of months later. Uh, you, you've done it all, Finally, Kurt. John Cena spotted a oh, new role. Oh, boy. But last but not least, have you seen John Cena's new look? <laughs> I have. The magazine had a picture of Cena <laughs> along with this report. The actor was photographed on the set of the upcoming prime video comedy film Ricky Stanicki in Melbourne, Australia on Wednesday. Cena, 45, stood with his face covered in makeup, complete with lipstick, eyeliner, and painted on eyebrows. <laughs> Bro, that shit is funny. I figure it was for some type of role or whatever. That shit was funny. This nigga, John Cena. <laughs> what the hell, man? What's going on, bro? <laughs> what you doing out there, man? 
But nah, man, wishing him the best luck as well and whatever he's doing, whatever project he's working on. Will we see him at WrestleMania? I would love to see a John Cena versus Austin Theory. I think that would be cool. But we will see how that plays out, man. But comment down below. Let me know. I'm going to ask y'all this specific question. I talked about it in the video. How do you guys rank the bloodline storyline, the whole saga, everything? How do you rank that? storyline wise compared to all the great wrestling stories of of yesterday you know what i'm saying let me know where you put the bloodline saga even though it's not completed where would you rank it as one of the best storylines in wwe history or would you say it's kind of in the middle of the road or you don't like the bloodline story at all let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support on the channel road to 150k and i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace